This is Twit. Well, we're talking with Bob Quillen, VP of Oracle's Cloud Developer Relations. I, I wanted to kind of jump in really quick. Uh, you talked a little bit about some of the managed solutions Oracle has out there today and and some of the open source stuff that you're doing. I wanted to kind of jump in a little bit. You, What are some of the solutions you guys are providing and what are the motivations behind some of those solutions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, imagine Kubernetes and we have a uh, container engine for Kubernetes, which is a certified, CNCF certified Kubernetes platform. allows you to run Kubernetes applications in a, in a managed service. We manage the control plane, all the masters for you, do all the upgrades and maintenance, et cetera, so you don't have to. Also, the, the data plane then are the worker nodes, which you can manage yourself, but there's also management and administration that's built on top of that too. So simplifies the management, uh, the care and feeding, uh, but also runs on top of this high performance, bare metal infrastructure, it can run VMs, it can run you know, GPUs, et cetera. So high performance there. Um, that's kind of the foundation for our strategy. So container native strategy built on top of Kubernetes, applications can be built on top of that for observability and monitoring. One of the most exciting things we're working on also, and you mentioned serverless, uh, we have an, a project called FN, and last year we launched this project as an open source project. It's being run independently, fnproject.io, uh, FN in function, um, and FN is a, um, an open serverless environment. Um, community, uh, a lot of community contributions happening. And really, this is the, the next big step for uh, cloud computing standardization. Right now, you know, AWS Lambda, kind of is the, the standard bearer. They came first to market, but it's a proprietary solution. And it creates a lot of lock-in for folks who um, are using that to glue together pieces of the AWS infrastructure. When they find they want to back away from that, they're kind of tied to their cloud provider. Now, I kind of went through this as a, a, a startup CEO and co-founder. Um, we end up being tied into our cloud providers way too often. Once you start getting trying to get more and more performance and use all the stand, non-standard APIs, uh, you get locked in. So. Uh, what we're looking to do is this next standardization built on top of Kubernetes containers needs to be around serverless and how um, serverless components can interact. CNCF is beginning to address this. Um, our contribution to this is the FN project. I welcome folks to get involved with that. We do a lot of sessions and training around it, FN project. Um, please, uh, you know, take a look at it. Uh, get involved. Um, there's, you know, I think over this next six to 12 months, you'll see a lot of activity across the standards community around how to bring these these components together. Because serverless is, is one of the more exciting elements that's bringing together, um, you know, simplifying how you manage an environment and how you de deploy and build an application. So you don't have to manage the servers anymore. And what's, I think, super exciting for, for you know, me as a, a developer and, and the development community is that the, a serverless function can then reach out to the edge. So now we can start getting smaller microservice, you know, functions out on the edge doing simple application running and bringing sensor data potentially back into the core. There's a lot of work going on in the CNCF and the Kubernetes world around Kubeflow and GraphPipe. These are components that are open sourced also that help you run machine learning applications at the core. So we're starting to see you know, ML, AI applications at the core driven off container native and serverless then being able to run things out on the edge in a very lightweight way, talking to the you know, Internet of Things, doing AR and VR technologies out on the edge, smart cars, retail, et cetera. So, you know, now we're starting to see all these things begin. And that, that's kind of the, the, the dream. We have, you know, a cloud native source, which is basically democratizing, you know, how you develop applications. Anyone could do it. You work for a small application or something as big as, you know, huge Oracle applications too. Um, and you get to play scaled at the core running ML and you know, big data applications, or it can then be you know, minimized and run out on the edge. So there's so much available right now, it's kind of breaking open, breaking down walls, creating all this innovative and creative flow for developers. And you know, you know, I've, I've been saying it's kind of the golden era from what I've seen, with all these pieces we just talked about at the very beginning, those the last 10 years are starting to come together and uh, we're seeing it being all deployed in, in a range of things. So it's, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing where this goes because you know, last three to five years have seen massive growth um, you know, these things are moving out of the off a laptop quickly into production at scale and then moving out to the edge. So, you know, that's kind of uh, what which gives me, gets me, uh, as I'm talking to more and more developers out there doing all this community work, this is kind of what gets them excited and what can also, uh, we're trying to, you know, help grow as a community. So, 
Right. Now, you, you touched on this a little bit. I think at, you know the the concept of uh, AWS Lambda or Azure Functions, Azure Logic Apps, that kind of thing. This kind of con- that's this, this aspect of serverless technology. It, it is. It becomes kind of a one of those things that becomes very lustry for for organizations because they say, hey, you know, I, all I have to do is you know build these things, not have to manage anything. But you know, from the FN project, how does this handle things like you know hybrid cloud, on-premise installations? You know, what kinds of things are there any restrictions to this type of technology? No, you know, that's the beauty of, of, of the project itself is that um, FN project you can run on your laptop, you know, very simply, you run on-prem. Um, it, it came out of the uh, the Iron.io team, which were the early serverless teams. Uh, they came out. That team came into Oracle and helped kind of take that technology to the next level. Um, there's folks that run run this locally. Uh, that you can run this by yourself up in the cloud. Um, Oracle is going to run a version of this as a functions as a service product, a Lambda-like function. You'll be hearing about that over the next probably few months. Um, so you know we've been. You can see that there's a way to deploy an FN um, app stack anywhere you want to. So um, definitely uh, join in, uh, start committing, uh, and start playing with it because it's there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. It's kind of easy to use. Um, you know there are. There are servers in the serverless world, except you just don't have to manage them. Um, and you know, to me, it's just another tool in the toolbox. It's not going to replace a lot of the, the container native application world, but there's some great use cases, um, ways that, you, um, that unlock value that you can combine the two worlds together uh, from a container app technology. Um, we're seeing a lot of people using Java and serverless together, too. Um, we have a huge uh, conference coming up called Code One. It runs parallel to uh, the Oracle Open World, which is in October. A lot of focus around Java and microservices, and where uh, serverless comes into that community too. So, um, you know, so it's 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 pretty cool to watch, um, you know, some of these technologies that've been around a while um, moving into uh, the mainstream, and then where serverless can help them, microservices can help them. All these things play uh, with the existing technology base along with the, the cool new toys that come out of uh, the open source world too. So um, people are running Java containers, they're running that on top of Kubernetes. Uh, you know, we've got customers who are doing, using WebLogic servers and you know, classic app server infrastructures, they're running that as containers too, and in a container infrastructure, um, and using WebLogic clusters in a cluster management role on top of Kubernetes. So you have this, this interesting you know, mix of, you know, you know, legacy technologies, greenfield cloud technologies, and then this new move and improve world where we're all taking our existing apps and beginning to re- replatform them into this new world to take advantage of the, the power at the core, um, these microservice uh, agile architectures, and uh, being able to then push some of that stuff out to the edge too. So, um, you know, lots of you know, lots of excitement again in, in all those areas, which makes the uh, you know. So, you know, it's, it's just a greenfield opportunity for developers these days. 